From the headquarters of Telesur English in Caracas, Venezuela, I am Janet Presmoya. This is From the South. Investigations to clarify the circumstances and responsible for the accident that caused the life of 55 migrants and left dozens injured in Chiapas, southern Mexico, continued, although it's still not report significant advance. Hundreds of people continue to arrive in the town of Chiapas to inquire about the situation of the family members who were traveling in the accident. With the help of Chiapas Ecos and regional and national authorities, some have already been able to identify the deceased family members. The Mexican government announced the creation of a task force against the network of human traffickers responsible for the accidents in Chiapas and has provided the survivors with clothing, items as well as means to communicate with their families. According to the latest reports from medical authorities 20 people have been discharged and 75 others remain hospitalized. The foreign minister of Mexico and Guatemala announced the creation of a regional commission to investigate the human trafficking network responsible for the accident that left at least 55 migrants dead in Chiapas. The tragedy occurred three days after the reactivation of U.S. program that forced migrants to wait in Mexico for response for the asylum application. Mexican President López Obrador said that the migration problem cannot be solved by coercive measures, but by opportunities for work and well-being. Guatemala's proposal are announcing tonight the creation of an immediate action group against a network of human traffickers responsible for the tragedy in Chiapas to identify, investigate, apprehend, and bring to justice the members and commanders of the transnational criminal organization responsible for this human tragedy. To follow up and care for the victims, to work together in the investigation process allows us to find those responsible and to logistically coordinate the process of repatriating the remains of those who unfortunately have died. The Colombian Congress included and approved an article in the anti-corruption law which, according to experts, will put a gag on the press and free speech for the benefit of the public officials who cannot be investigated for their actions. The article was approved within the anti-corruption law passed in both the Senate and the House, which would allow limiting the exercise of the press in alleged cases of corruption related to public officials. The Congress of Colombia has just approved an article that, for us, is a gag law. Who benefits from this article? Corrupt politicians, what happened with Karen Abudinen, what happened with Jennifer Arias, what has happened with so many corrupt politicians of the government coalition. That's why they want to censor the press. That's why they put this article. They are afraid that journalists investigate and denounce. This is intended to prohibit the media from filing complaints if there is no conclusive evidence against a person or public official under investigation. The author of this article is Cesar Lordui, who belongs to the party Radical Change, an ally of the Democratic Center, the ruling party. The initial content of this article proposed imprisonment and a fine for those who, by slander and defamation, would attempt to attack or obstruct the functions of a public servant. However, before the vote, the economic and criminal penalty was eliminated. The whole root of the project is governmental. It is the parties related to the government as the final vote showed. The vote that was finally imposed in the chamber and demonstrates an authoritarian character are very close to dictatorial. Even in front of microphones, it seems otherwise, but it is a totalitarian character of the government that took the courts, that took the Congress, that took the instances of the control agencies, and now even wants to take the freedom of expression. Finally, the approved article allows a suspension or cancellation of legal status of any organization of the person or persons who have defamed or slandered the public servant or former public official or his or her family. This article was approved by 59 yes votes and 53 nay in its last debate in the House. Now we adopt everything we criticize in Colombia. The journalists cannot denounce corruption because supposedly that is fatal, so somehow they live saying that they are for a transparent country. 
uh, for a country without corruption, for a country of freedoms, and it bothers them that they are questioned. And the sad thing is that journalism denounces and nothing happens. Justice does nothing, the president does nothing, he is indolent. For the moment, the conciliation of the tax approved both by both the Senate and the Chamber is expected before going to presidential sanction, and that is there where some analysts assure that it will not pass, and if it does, it will be rejected by the Constitutional Court since it clearly violates Article 20 of the Colombian Constitution, which guarantees everyone the freedom to express their thoughts and opinions, to inform and receive truthful and impartial information. In Colombia, farmers from different regions demonstrated in front of the Minister of Agriculture to continue demanding the modification of Decree 596 of June 1, 2021, of Law 2071 of 2020, considering it discriminatory and for small and medium farmers. The demonstrations that has been taking place since December night stress that the farmers want to be heard by the government which warranted the relief of their debts. It provides economic aid with different entities, such as the Fund for the Financing of the Agricultural Sectors and the Agrarian Bank. However, the demonstrators assure that their main concern is the possible loss of their lands, considering that so far the government has not given them any kind of warranties. Time for a break. We will be right back, so don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. Salvadorians demand justice. Forty years after El Mosote massacre, the massacre took place in December 1981, when units of the Salvadorian army led by the counterinsurgency, which has been trained by the United States, launched the so-called Operation Rescue. In 2017, the government of El Salvador said that almost 1,000 people, half of them children, were killed. It is a strong case that we must take to the last consequences. You obtained an international sentence from the Inter-American Court, and this is a great tool. We must continue to demand that the government comply with this sentence. The sentence and the reparation will not be fulfilled with acts of force, nor by bringing in the military or demolishing craft stalls in the village. The government of the United States handed over to a court in Morazan classified documents on the massacre of El Mosote. The information was confirmed by the United States Embassy in San Salvador. The Washington official explained that the disclassified U.S. government documents requested by the court in charge of the investigation were submitted and said that many more will be provided in the future. The San Francisco Sotoras Examining Court is prosecuting a dozen retired military commanders, but the case is on hold. According to the United Nations True Commission report, in El Salvador, units of the Atlacal Battalion systematically torture and execute children, men and women in El Mosote and other neighboring areas. In El Salvador this Sunday, a new popular march was called for against the administration of President Nayib Bukele. The opposition movement, Block of Resistance and Population Rebellion, is leading the call to march against an administration which, they say, has not done much for the working people. They also reject the approval of laws, such as the one that makes bitcoins as legal currency in the country.
In Chile, the Regional Ministerial Secretary of Health of the Metropolitan Region confirmed the first cases of the Omicron variant of COVID-19 in the capital city of Santiago. Through a press release, the organization explained that the first confirmed case is a 65-year-old man. He was quickly hospitalized to receive medical assistance. The information also pointed out that the infected person had not been vaccinated against COVID-19. Other cases have been also confirmed in the region of Valparaíso and the first in the region of O'Higgins. Rafael Ramirez, representative of the United Nations Children's Funds in Bolivia, highlighted positively that the government of uh, President Luis Arce has decided to stand vaccination against COVID-19 to minors between 5 and 11 years of age. The high official expressed that this is a very positive action, above all, to ensure that the children are protected so they can return to school. Ramirez also highlighted the existence of the doses for the other population groups. The Minister of Health reported that 11,000 children in the age range have been vaccinated already. He assured that none of them had any adverse effect. The Cuban Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology report that the results concerning safety of the Abdala anti-COVID-19 vaccines are already being published in international journals. Last July, the Center for State Control of Drugs, Equipment and Medical Device decided to authorize the emergency use of the vaccine. Based on the data obtained in clinical trials, Abdala demonstrated 92% efficacy in preventing symptomatic forms of the disease. Marena Musio, director of clinical research at the center recently confirmed that Abdallah, over time, maintains its safety, effectiveness and immune response to COVID-19 and these elements confirm its sustainability for booster doses. Abdallah is the first immunogen in Latin America and the Caribbean. Venezuela already has surpassed the figure of over 81% of the population vaccinated against COVID-19, according to figures updated by the Office in Charge of Territorial Socialism. Venezuela continues to make effective progress in the vaccination campaign, with 81% of the population already immunized. Although the country is going through states of containment of the pandemic, authorities reiterate the call to citizens from two years of age to attend to more than 2,000 vaccinations centers set up in the country and strengthen health control measures to prevent further outbreaks. Venezuela confirmed 7,096 cases of the COVID-19 to accumulate 14,000 of this total have been already recovered with grants of uh, recovery rates of 97% of the population. We have more stories coming up after this final short break, so stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. The Russian government warned about the build-up of military forces in the North Atlantic Treaty Organization in Greece. This Saturday, in declarations to the press, the Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov denounced the deployment through the Alexandropolis port of NATO soldiers on its territory which is increasing and it's leading to the opening of new facilities for this organization. In view of the situation, Moscow has improved its offensive and defensive facilities as part of the defense of its sovereignty. The port of Alexandropolis is of serious strategic importance to Washington, apparently because it wants to strengthen its force and those of NATO deployed in the Balkans and the Black Sea, very close to Russia's western flank. Tunisians protest violence against women in capital. Dozens of Tunisians gathered in central Tunis and held a silent march carrying placards and banners protesting violence against women and calling on the government to do more efforts law that will protect them from domestic violence. In 2017, the Tunisian parliament adopted the law of elimination of violence against women. But the state of the murder is more difficult when not on paper. Women continue to face an uphill struggle to obtain justice and ensure their personal safety. According to a survey from the Minister of Women, at least 
47% of female citizens who took part in the study experienced domestic violence in their lifetime. These numbers have only increased with the COVID-19 pandemic, the March 6, to raise awareness on support for survivors of domestic violence, as well as to implant campaigns and public education programs to change social attitudes that encourage or legitimate violence against women. In India, group of farmers quite protest sites in the outskirts of the capital on Sunday and returned to their homes, marking the end of their year-long demonstrations against agricultural reforms. Farmers dismantled their informal shelter at the protest sites and began clearing long sections of roads around New Delhi where they had been campaign since November last year. The farmers' decisions follow an announcement three weeks ago by Prime Minister Narendra Modi that this administration would repeal the three agricultural law in the winter session of Parliament, a decision that was passed by the both houses of the legislature. However, the leaders of the agrarian unions say that they will meet again in January 15 to verify the fulfillment of their demands. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization FAO warned about the increase of hunger in Latin America to the highest levels since the year 2000. The organization's regional representative pointed out that between 2014 and 2020, hunger in Latin America increased by 79%. He also pointed out that as a result of the economic crisis prompted by the COVID-19 pandemic, hunger affects almost 59.7 million people in Latin America and the Caribbean. The FAO official provided data on social inequality highlighting a gap between men and women. In 2020, with the worsening of the crisis, 41.8% of women in the region and 32.2% of men will suffer some time of food inequality, which represents almost a 10% difference between genders. We have come to the end of this news brief. Remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. You can also follow us on social media for the latest news. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Telesur English, I am Janet Perez Moya. Thank you for watching.